You're listening to a Mint podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. Welcome to another episode of Why Not Mint Money, Mint's flagship personal finance podcast. I'm your host Akshat Rawatgi from Mint's personal finance team, and in today's episode, we're diving deep into a variant of SIPs or systematic investment plans called Trigger SIPs. These are an alternative investment strategy that offer flexibility in timing your investments to take advantage of market conditions. While they sound promising, we'll explore their limitations and whether they are the ideal choice for the investors. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started with your money journey. A traditional systematic investment plan or SIP is known for its fixed schedule effectively mitigating market volatility by evenly distributing investment costs over market cycles. However, the downside is that investors may miss the opportunities during market dips. This is where trigger SIPs come into play. These offer the flexibility to time your investments based on certain market conditions, either when the market rises or falls by a specific level. Many investors employ various SIP triggers to enhance their investment strategies. The price-based trigger is a popular choice where SIP amounts increase when an asset's price or of mutual funds NAV falls by a corresponding percentage. The next trigger is the lump sum trigger. which is a variant of the price trigger that allows investors to make a lump sum investment when the asset's price experiences a specific decline another option is the value metric or the price to earning based trigger sip which monitors the price to earning ratio of the benchmark indices like nifty or sensex when this ratio falls below a predetermined threshold set by the investors the sip increases by a predefined amount Now to better understand the limitations of trigger SIPs we did a study at Mint Now let's deep dive into some scenarios In a base case scenario we have a hypothetical investment where an individual starts some monthly SIP of rupees 10000 in Nifty 50 total return index on 1st January 2000 and continues this SIP every month until 1st October of this year This resulted in a total investment of 28.6 lakhs over a period of 23 and a half years and as of 30th October the investment grows to approximately 2 crores 6 lakhs and with an XRR of 14.20% and approximately absolute returns of 622%. Now let's test some scenarios. So in scenario 1 whenever nifty index experiences a monthly decline of 5% or more we increase the sip contribution for the following month by double its original amount so the 23 year sip the same as in the base case scenario results in a total invested corpus of approximately 32.3 lakhs which is approximately 4 lakhs more than in the base case scenario by the end of october this year that is 30th october the investment grows to 2 crores 45 lakhs with a portfolio xrr of 14.239% this approach led to an impressive absolute returns of 660% and an absolute return increase of 39 lakhs in the final corpus however it's essential to note that the portfolio xrr remains almost the same In scenario 2 whenever the nifty index registers a monthly decline of 10% or more an additional lump sum investment of 1 lakh is incorporated into the strategy which led to an total investment of 42 lakhs uh, which is approximately 14 lakhs more than in our base case over the 23 year period by the end of october 2023 the investment had grown to 3 crores and 78 lakhs resulting in a portfolio xrr of 14.14%. The strategy didn't yield an extra xrr however it did lead to an increase in the absolute returns which is approximately 800% in this case and an increase in the final corpus by more than 1.7 crores. 
In scenario three, whenever the Nifty PE price to earnings ratio falls into the first quartile, which is approximately 18 below 18, the SIP amount is boosted by 20% for the upcoming month. This strategy over 23 years resulted in an invested corpus of 29.9 lakhs and on as of 30th October 2023, investment had grown to approximately 2.25 crores with a portfolio XLR of 14.31%. Despite this different approach, the portfolio XLR doesn't tra- change dramatically. The observations from these scenarios emphasize the idea that an investor looking to enhance their final corpus should only consider t- using trigger sips during market downturns. The observations from these scenarios emphasize the idea that an investor looking to enhance their final corpus should consider investing during market downturns. Trigger-based SIPs may not be as effective unless the incremental capital invested is significant enough to lower the average purchase cost of the asset or the mutual fund. We did another interesting study. So the return on investments are unaffected if the SIP starts at market peaks or market bottoms in the long run. Investments made during the 2008 market peak and the 2008 market bottom yielded similar portfolio XIR values of 12.52 and 12.79% respectively by October 2023. Similarly, investments made during the 2020 market peak and bottom resulted in a portfolio XIR difference of less than 1.5%. So over the long run, the, the spread contracts. So this underscores that over longer investment horizons, the choice of entry point has a relatively minor impact on returns. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Why Not Mint Money. Remember, investing always comes with its ups and downs and it's crucial to make informed decisions based on your financial goals. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in the future episodes, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or X and LinkedIn. Until next time, stay financially informed and ask yourself, why not mint money? Stay updated on this podcast. Follow us at HD Smartcast on all the major social media platforms. To listen to more such podcasts, log on to www.hdsmartcast.com. Smartcast.com.